You ever just want to quit your job, buy a boat, sail around the world? Well, what if we told you that was possible? I'm Rad. And I'm Sasha. With more willpower than money and a dream to become pirates, we bought a sinking sailboat and spent the next nine months transforming it into one of the sexiest boats on the seven seas. There is nothing that can get in the way of us sailing around the world. So grab your popcorn, hit subscribe, and be prepared for one hell of a story. The story of our lives. This is the journey of Spirit Animal. We just spent the last 10 days rebuilding our engine on anchor so we could make our haul out slot today at 9 o'clock a.m. Over the last 12 hours, we stayed up all night long putting all the pieces back together. If we miss this haul out slot, the next available haul out is two months from today. the seawater pump okay all right last thing we got to do is adjust the transmission and then catch this seven o'clock bridge so we can get to, to, to the marina on time what time we got Woo, we got to hurry all right we have to hurry our hat here Fresh water, we need water to come out. There it goes! Yay! We have water, we have a working engine. Now we just gotta get the anchor up so we can make the. Oh shit, it's going up, it's going up! Forward! Shit, that shifted really hard! That was the first shift of our brand new transmission. We had more pressing matters to deal with. We're moving! I was up on the bow of the boat, pulling in the anchor while Sasha was driving and keeping a close eye on the bridge. Neutral! The last old last bridge, last old last bridge, this is spirit animal. Channel 9, right? No matter what we said, the bridge operator had no exceptions. This means we are going to have to wait 30 minutes until the next opening and potentially lose our haul out spot. Bit of a rough morning. The engine starts, but we are not getting full RPMs. Uh, I think I'm worried that it's the damn compression. The engine's running, but we're barely moving and uh, we're having some troubles. It's a rough morning. 
We just need to make it to the yard. This sucks to spend six thousand dollars on an engine that you might have to just throw away, replace. Yeah. As you can see, we're a bit distraught, but with good reason. To put things into perspective, we spent the last three weeks covered in paint and grease cleaning this boat, moving our belongings on, and rebuilding this engine on anchor while bailing water out of it on a daily basis. Not to mention, we've been eating cold chicken wings and trail mix out of a cooler that needs ice every other day, showering out of cold buckets on the back of the boat, and also sleeping on bean bags outside because the boat is too filthy to live in. And finally, for the cherry on top, the transmission we just had rebuilt is shifting very hard, the engine we spent 10 days on won't reach RPMs, and we just missed the bridge and are running late to our haul out. Now this is not an invitation to our pity party, it's simply a first person point of view so that you can see this journey through the same eyes we did. I got dirt in my eye and I haven't slept, so boat's not going too fast. That's full blast. Not good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there and I'm going to crack each fuel line going into each cylinder, which might be able to tell me something. So this is a little trick that can narrow down a few of your problems. Basically, you're just going to take a wrench and open up each individual fuel line one at a time. You're just going to open it up maybe a quarter of a turn, enough to relieve some pressure and let some fuel escape. Now you're listening for a change in RPMs of your engine. Once you open the line, if your engine bogs down a little bit, that means that cylinder was working properly. If you open the line and there's no change in sound, that means that cylinder wasn't working properly. Either you have a clogged fuel injector or some other problem down the line, like bad compression. Let's see if you can hear a difference. They all sounded about the same there. And honestly, I don't know what to tell you about that one. <laughs> uh, that means that, let's see, what does that mean? That means that they're all getting fuel. That's a good sign, right? Yeah, but maybe it's a linkage problem is the reason why we're not getting full RPMs. I don't know, maybe there's a damn crab chat on the prop. Still haven't seen the bottom of the boat. Don't really know what the problem is. Go right right here. Oh. And I'm delusional. I haven't slept in a long time, so let me think about this to my lonesome before I go thinking on camera and sound like a dumbass. <laughs> sound a lot smarter than I do about cylinders. <laughs> you ever spend two weeks fixing up an engine that you gotta throw away? Doesn't make you feel too good. No, doesn't make you feel too good, but we're gonna roll with the punches, and uh, all I can say is I love the layout of this boat. Still, that's the only thing it's really got going for it, and I just love the layout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, getting down to the wire here. We are coming through the channel, and uh, I am anxious to see the bottom of this boat, and get this thing hauled out, and really start working on it. You know, the engine doesn't work, but I'm still gonna paint that mother trucker. Feel me? be a sexy floating turd. So we get to Playboy Marine and luckily they had a cancellation, which means now we have the time to haul out. However, they surprised us when they said we were gonna have to reverse all the way into the boat lift. You can see the lift about 300 yards down this tight channel surrounded by mega yachts. We got a side wind of about 10 knots coming from the east, a boat that only reverses in one direction, no bow thrusters, and a transmission that only shifts into gear when it feels like it. What's the worst that could happen? Oh. I can I can push you with the dinghy too if you need me to. And I can use that as a fender too if I need to. So while I was trying to reverse the boat in, we put Sasha in the dinghy and she was pushing on the nose of our boat like a bow thruster. Okay. Yeah, you gotta you gotta push the nose around. This is a shit show. I don't have bow thrusters. Boat barely moves. They want me to reverse in this thing. Sasha's on the front with the dinghy. Sasha, 
Keep going. When I reverse, the boat turns left. All right. Push the nose the other way. Okay. Push harder. You see how close we are? Wow, I don't know how we managed to do that. Sasha did an excellent job. There's not that many people that understand. When I hit reverse on this boat, it only wants to turn one way. And if you look, we probably got eight feet on each side of these two super mega yachts. And we just had to reverse down that with a side wind, with no bow thrusters, with a motor that barely works. For Sasha and I, we've just reached the next chapter in our book. We've been through hell and back to get here, and we know that we have a lot of work ahead of us, but this feels like a huge win. Seeing this boat lifted out of the water only lets us know that we are one step closer to our dreams, and hopefully, the days of bailing water to keep her afloat are now behind us. Now that's a barnacle farm right there, boy. Who's hungry? That's a big boat. Boats out and I am quite surprised. It looks pretty good. The barnacles looked terrible, but they came off pretty easy. So, uh, actually they didn't. Looks like we're gonna have to sand a lot, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks 100 times better than it did. Now that the boat was out of the water, it gave us a good visual to see what this thing had been through. And we were not surprised to find some damage. There were plenty of patches, I would say more than we had anticipated. The rudder was also banged up and had a bunch of old patchwork done, and it definitely needed a lot of attention as well. Not to mention, the bearings were loose, so those would have to be replaced. And, just like we guessed, I have no zinc. That's a nice dinger. Yo, what's this keel made of? Steel? Good. I don't know what that means. Ow, I just skinned myself really bad. Barnacles! Oh man, that one hurt. of many to come. Yeah, it's a field. Going up Whoa. to the spirit animal himself. Yes. This is high though, this is really high. We're gonna have to get scaffolding to paint this thing for sure. So much work ahead of us. We're gonna be here a month. <laughs> we were officially in the yard and we were dead tired. So this was the beginning of our couch surfing era. We took the dinghy and we headed back into town. Luckily, my sister Alina, AKA the shovel, was renting a house nearby. And we really need to recharge our batteries because we have a long day tomorrow. Good morning. <laughs> I haven't had coffee, but I'm a little bit awake this morning. So, 
We are in the boat yard, day one. We're gonna go through this morning and scrape the rest of the barnacles off the bottom of the boat. Got my handy dandy uh, total boat gloves on, protect my hands from these nasty barnacles that gave me a nice cut the other day on my leg. And then we're also gonna go through and pull this decal off. We're gonna be repainting the top sides as well as the bottom. So we have a lot of prepping to do. Ready for this. Oh, he's gonna make some coffee. <laughs> I told myself two days ago that I was gonna lay off the coffee and I've never craved it more <laughs> or needed it more than now. So we're gonna delay the coffee break for a month. A month. <laughs> yes! Yes! I love coffee. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go make some coffee first. Break time! Girl seven four. So you like that. Oh shoot, oh shoot. We hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We want to give a warm welcome to all of our new patrons, and we want to thank the rest of you for your continued love and support. See you next week!